The original 24G2 arguably was the most popular monitor of the last few years. Well, at least till AOC quietly changed the panel for a few batches without any notice. So at that time, there were essentially two different 2042s that looked the same, had the exact same name, but differed in image quality and such. And now, well, here's another third version of the 24G2. But this time, AOC did the right thing and called it 24G2SP, clearly showing that this is a new and different monitor, despite the fact that it looks exactly like all the other monitors of the 24G2 series. But is this monitor actually better than the original 24G2? Certainly not when it comes to design and ergonomics, but yeah, as you probably have guessed, the 24G2SP uses a new panel that's different from both versions of the previous 24G2. It's from the same series by TPV, but this is the LF4F version, as the factory menu tells us. The spec sheet still looks fairly similar, but the new panel bumps up the refresh rate slightly to 165Hz from the previous 144Hz, which really is nothing to write home about. But the new panel actually is quite a bit more different than the spec sheet might suggest. Before we get into that, I'd like to let you know that AUC provided the monitor for this review but of course they don't get any input on this video whatsoever. This video has a sponsor though and that is Anchor. They've sent me this massive portable battery which according to the specs should actually be powerful enough to be powering my whole PC gaming setup with ease. This 1.2 kilowatt hours bad boy obviously is more geared towards powering auto gear but yeah I wanted to know if it can handle my gaming setup so let's see. Well, apparently my PC, monitor and all peripherals are just zipping a mere 230 watts while running Valorant. So with a maximum output power of 1500 watts, this could actually power a small LAN party, which is crazy. Now I'm curious as to how long this thing can power my setup. So I've been gaming for like half an hour now and it says that I still have about 90% or 4 hours left. Now there also are optional solar panels that you can use to charge the powerhouse with up to 300 watts while using it. So I guess if I really wanted to take my PC on a camping trip, I actually could play Valorant for quite a long time. While power can charge the batteries from 0 to 80% in just an hour, and Anchor also offer two smaller capacity models which come with the same durable LFP battery technology and the same 5 year warranty. Learn more at the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. I'm really not gonna recap my rant about AOC putting tacky red accents on this monitor as the design is unchanged from the previous models. But I am gonna say that the design looks a bit dated now. However, the ergonomics of the height adjustable stand still are really good. If you'd like to know more about the ergonomics part, I'd suggest watching one of my other videos about the 24G2 series monitors that I will link down below. Now you might have noticed that the particular monitor that I have here has a completely black stand without the silver base and an additional USB hub at the back of the monitor. That's because this is the SPU version, which apart from these two features and a pair of integrated speakers, is the same monitor as the non-U 24G2 SP. I'm probably gonna be calling it SP and SPU interchangeably throughout this review. Now I think most of you wanna know how the new version compares to the older models and whether or not it makes sense to upgrade or if you should quickly pick up one of the original 24G2s before it might get discontinued. Well, in terms of the maximum brightness, the new panel actually is the brightest of the bunch, reaching well over 400 nits, which is very bright for the entry-level segment. Unfortunately, the lowest brightness setting also is pretty bright, which I find very annoying when using this monitor in the evening or even at night. That's definitely a step back from either of the old versions. By the way, if you are picking up a plain normal 24G2 today, you're very likely going to be getting a version 1 model, as the second version was discontinued according to AOC. I've made a whole video comparing both versions and showing how to tell them apart, which I will link down below. Now when it comes to the contrast ratio, the SP version scores a solid 1290 to 1, which pretty much slots in right between both versions of the 24G2. That's definitely not a bad result for an IPS, even though it's slightly worse than the first version 24G2. Not to the point that it's easily noticeable at a glance, and we also need to factor in variance, so the slight step back in contrast is really nothing I want to be too harsh on. I definitely do enjoy the 24G2 SPU for media consumption, at least with a few settings tweaked, since with the stock settings, the image has a pretty bad magenta tint, but more on that in a bit. Other than that, the colors look nice and saturated, and that's because the 24G2 SPU is our typical somewhat wide gamut monitor, just like the non-SP versions. 
meaning we get some oversaturation when viewing regular content, but not to the point that it would bother most people. To put that into actual numbers, we get about 1.3 times the color gamut volume of sRGB and a decent DCI-P3 coverage. Naturally, that means we're getting a relatively high delta E when measuring against sRGB. The biggest problem with the default setup is the white point though. We get a pretty hefty magenta shift that really needs to be corrected. The sRGB mode unfortunately isn't much better and what's super annoying is that you can't even adjust the color temperature in the sRGB mode because this and a bunch of other settings are locked in this mode. To make matters worse, the brightness adjustment is one of those locked settings, leaving us with a super bright setting of almost 400 nits, which is just nuts. So I see you really don't need to bother including an sRGB mode when this is what it looks like. Anyway, with tweaked settings, the 24G2 SPU actually can look really good, so I definitely recommend changing some settings. And calibrated and profiled, this improves even further as you would expect. Now these are the image quality related settings I recommend using. I also recommend applying the ICC profile that you can download from the video description. This profile should be used together with the recommended settings. In case you don't know how to use an ICC profile, I've got a guide linked in the top right corner. Now let's shift gears a little and talk about all the gaming related stuff. You may remember that I criticized the original 24G2 for adaptive sync flickering and also for showing visible inversion artifacts. I'm glad to say that both of these problems are solved now. The SP version even got NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible certification, so NVIDIA also thinks that Adaptive Sync works properly now, and based on my testing, I totally agree. There's no flickering or any other artifacts, and LFC kicks in at 55 FPS. Now what about the response times, ghosting, motion blur, and all the good stuff? As usual, we're gonna be using Burbus's Pursuit Camera Technique and also look at some response time heatmaps in a bit. AUC provide us with four overdrive settings, but they honestly all look fairly similar, just like with the other 24 G2s. At 165Hz, we get minimal overshoot in the strongest setting, which is totally acceptable. Hence, strong is the best setting at the maximum refresh rate. And the response time measurements back that up, showing minimal overshoot at 165Hz. Okay, the response times surely aren't the best, but an average of 6.5 milliseconds isn't too bad either. By the way, if you're into these response time heat maps, you can find some more over at my Patreon. Now for some context, here's what the response times of the EX2510S look like in comparison, which is one of the fastest IPS monitors of this class. And it's obvious that the 24G2 SPU isn't quite as fast as that. Now when it comes to lower refresh rates, the overdrive of the 24G2 SPU is a bit too much in the strong setting, showing a bit more visible overshoot than I would like. At 120Hz, this generally is still usable, which is good news if you like using adaptive sync close to the maximum refresh rate. However, if you're planning to use this monitor at 120Hz exclusively, or like on a console, I'd recommend setting the overdrive to weak instead. The weak mode still is usable at 60Hz, though at this refresh rate, off would be the better choice. So yeah, there's no single overdrive setting that's optimal throughout the refresh rate range, though the weak setting would be a decent compromise. Now let's compare the SPU to all the other 24G2s. The original 24G2, aka version version 1 is what you'll be getting when you're buying a brand new 24G2 right now. And actually, in terms of response times, this looks ever so slightly better than the new SP version. You're unlikely to actually notice differences this small in-game, but the SP version shows slightly more smearing in the dark track, which is a bit unfortunate. What's even more unfortunate is that the 24G2 V2 shows the least amount of smearing out of these three. Though according to AOC, the second version has been discontinued, so you'll be unlikely to find this brand new, which really is a bummer given that this is the fastest 24G2. Well, at least when we ignore the 24G2 ZU, which is the 240Hz version. But even at 144Hz, this is as fast as the second version 24G2. So either way, the 24G2 ZU is the fastest version of this monitor that you can buy right now, while the SP version unfortunately is the slowest. Not by a significant margin, but that's a slight step back nevertheless. Now the 24G2 SPU also comes with backlight strobing, or as AOC like to call it, MBR. I really like that this is adjustable with a slide up from 1 to 20, giving a much finer control than many other monitors do. Dialing this in generally is a compromise between clarity, 
and brightness, and I find settings around the MBR10 range to make the most sense. However, in comparison to some of the best strobing implementations out there, it's pretty clear that it's not exactly a good backlight strobing mode. I personally wouldn't recommend using it, just like with both versions of the 24G2. Actually, the majority of monitors have a pretty bad backlight strobing mode, so the 24G2 SPU really is nothing special in that regard. Now, all things considered, should you buy the new SP version or rather get the original 24G2 instead? Or even get a completely different monitor from another brand? Well, the SP version definitely is not a clear upgrade over the original 24G2, as not everything has been improved and some things actually have gotten worse. And I'm referring to the first version of the 24G2 here, as the second version has been discontinued, so it doesn't make too much stands to compare the new SP version to a monitor that you can't buy anymore. Compared to the first 24G2, the biggest improvement is that Adaptive Sync doesn't cause flickering below 100 FPS anymore and that the updated SP version doesn't show visible inversion artifacts. We also get a slightly higher brightness and a rather insignificant refresh rate increase to 165Hz. But that's pretty much about it, which surely isn't enough to call it a true upgrade. And let's not forget that some things, including the contrast ratio and the response times, have even gotten slightly worse. Not to the point that it actually would be noticeable unless you're comparing both monitors directly side by side and are really looking closely. So for the same price, I'd actually slightly favor the new SP version because of the flickering and artifacting issues of the original 24G2. That is, if I had to decide between either of these two monitors from AOC. Usually the Gigabyte G24F can be had for roughly the same price and it's faster, making it a better choice for gaming. And yeah, it overall feels like a more modern monitor and it has a single overdrive mode that's pretty much perfect throughout the refresh rate range. And let's not forget about the minimum brightness setting, which unlike the 24G2 SPU doesn't burn your eyeballs, which is something I personally really appreciate. I'll link the full review of the G24F on screen right now. And I really suggest watching that review if you're mainly looking for a monitor that's really good for gaming. Thanks for watching, man sieht sich im nächsten Video.